And so this is the secret that they don't want you to know. Hello world! Welcome back everyone to another episode of Shanae Meets World. And today we're going to talk all about travel planning. I am going to provide you with some helpful tips on how you can make planning your next vacation so much easier. I'm going to give you six steps because I know that travel planning, sometimes there's too much information, sometimes there's not enough information, and sometimes we just don't know where to start. And so I'm going to make this easy for you. I'm going to provide you with six steps on how you can plan your next vacation. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to my channel. In step number one, we're going to talk all about your flights. The first thing I want to recommend to you is to keep your dates flexible, if you can. Because what you want to do is you want to search the flights based on the best rates possible. And Google Flights will then pull up an entire calendar for the month and it will show you which dates have this rate, which dates have a different rate, and it will highlight the rates in green if the rates are the best for that month. And so if you're planning a vacation somewhere that you just want to go and you don't have a reason, for example, if you're not going for a wedding where the dates are already locked in, or you're not going for a conference and the dates are already locked in, then you can plan a flexible vacation. And you want to do this based on flights, availability, and the prices. So start there. Start with searching for the best rates possible based on flexible dates. Once your flights are booked, then I recommend that you go to Google Maps and you search the distance between the airport and the city center. And the reason why I say this is because this is going to help you decide what hotel you are going to stay in. And it's also going to help you decide the best mode of transportation to get to the airport and from the airport. After you've decided the distance between the airport and the city center, then you can go to the airport's website. And this is normally what I do. The airport's website will actually provide you with detailed instructions on transportation. For example, at Madrid's airport, they have a train station in the airport. So you don't even have to leave the airport in order to get from the airport to the city center. And this makes life much easier. Some airports have bus buses and you will go to the airport, for example, in Switzerland. When I, got to, when I arrived in Switzerland, they had buses that would take you from the airport to the city center. And this is easy as well. It was five euros. You just get on the bus. You buy your ticket first, obviously, at the airport. And then you get on the bus and then you all go to the city center where the drop off point is. And most of the time it's at a train station or at a central location. The next step is to book your hotel. So use Google Maps and decide where do you want to stay in reference to the city center. And then you also want to consider your budget and the amenities that you want. You also want to make sure that the location is ideal for you because you don't want to be in a place if, for example, you love walking and you want to be able to walk to all of the restaurants or to live events, for example. You want to make sure that if you love walking and you prefer to walk during your vacation, that you're staying somewhere in a central location where everything is in walking distance or it's a quick train ride to where you need to go. If you prefer to stay on the outskirts in a tranquil palmery, for example, or if you want to stay in the desert, then those are things that you need to consider when you're looking for your hotel. Once you've decided on one to three hotels, then what I recommend is you actually contact the hotel directly. A lot of times when we book hotels, we're going through Hotel.com, Expedia.com, and for me, HostelWorld.com because I book through I book hostels. What I recommend is actually contacting the hotel or hostel directly or Airbnb. 
I recommend contacting them directly because you never know. They may actually be offering special rates if you book with them directly versus if you book through the website. And they'll also be able to answer questions on airport transportation. Maybe they provide airport transportation, so you don't even have to get airport transportation at the airport. You can get private shuttle service directly from your hotel. So once you've decided on one to three hotels, I recommend contacting those hotels and seeing what amenities they offer. That way, you can decide which option works best for you. And I definitely recommend going with the option that at least checks off three of five boxes on your checklist of hotel amenities. Once you've booked your hotel and you've booked your flight, the next step is what are you going to do when you arrive? What activities are you going to do? What experience are, are you, experiences are you going to seek when you get to your destination? The hotel is going to be very helpful in this aspect and I definitely recommend you be in contact with the hotel that you're going to be staying because they're experts on their destination. They're going to be able to tell you what it is you can do when you get there. Here in Morocco, we have many activities. You can go to a hammam, which is a local bathhouse, and it's a spa treatment that you'll get. You can have a camel ride. You can have a guided tour. These are things that your hotel will know, and they will be able to recommend for you as activities. You can also use TripAdvisor. This is a very well-known resource, and it's a trusted resource. And so if you find an activity that you want to participate in, use TripAdvisor to read the reviews and see what other people have to say. I also use Instagram when I'm looking for activities and things to do. And the reason why is because people always post what they do when they travel. And you can find some of the coolest local bars, the uh, really cool live events that you can attend, some restaurants, all of the things that you must do, you will definitely find them on Instagram. All you have to do is go into Instagram, search the destination, and you can look up hashtags, you can look up restaurants, you can look up locations, you can look up people that are in the area. Instagram is a great tool to use when you're thinking about activities that you want to do in a specific de destination. The fourth step for travel planning is to decide what type of internet connection you are going to have while you're traveling. And most of the time, this, is com this comes into concern when we are traveling internationally. When you're traveling in your home country, you don't have to worry about your cellular connection because most of the time we already have a connection with our cell phone service. If you're traveling internationally though, you do want to consider if your phone can take another SIM card for that specific country that you're going to be traveling in. And if not, do you have an extra phone that you can take with you that you can add a SIM card to for that country? You can contact your cell phone company to see if they have international plans. That's an option that I know most everyone uses. For me, I don't use that as an option. I actually have a phone that can allow me to trade SIM cards in and out. So whichever country I'm in, all I have to do is get a SIM card for that country and add minutes and add data and I can use my phone. And the secret is, when I first moved to Morocco, I was looking for the best option to be able to use my phone when I left the US. And luckily, I had a Verizon phone. And I did not know this at all before we got the family plan with Verizon. But, but Verizon phones already come unlocked. And so this is the secret that they don't want you to know. Locked phone means that the SIM card is locked and that you cannot replace the SIM card with another one without the password. And Verizon does not have locked SIM cards. So when I left the US, I had a Verizon phone and I was able to trade it trade take out the SIM card and replace it with a SIM card from Morocco and use it without having a passcode. Another thing that I recommend if you are using your international plan, I honestly 
it's a bit sketchy for me, which is why I, I don't prefer to use an international plan because I would hate to get back home and I have this bill that's out of this world. I recommend you turn off your cellular data. And this will ensure that you're only using the Wi-Fi that is available in your destination. So that may be at your hotel or at a restaurant or a cafe or a bar. You can always ask them for the internet code and you can use the Wi-Fi. That's just to ensure that you're not getting any roaming charges or you're not getting any hidden charges that you don't know about. And that's if you decide to go with the international plan. And if you want to replace your SIM card, if that's an option for you, it's so easy. All you have to do is when you get to the airport, there are usually kiosks there and you can buy a SIM card right on the spot. Now, on to step number five. People get so overwhelmed when they, try, when they want to travel and they're thinking that they have to spend so much money. And that's really not the case. There are ways that you can decide how much you're going to spend or how much you want to spend when you travel. And a good way to do that is from the beginning when I mentioned steps number one and two and also three. And that's deciding first how much you're going to spend on your flight. And once you've decided that, then you can determine how much in your budget do you have for your hotel. Those are already costs that you have already set aside for your trip so you know that that is taken care of and then once you start researching activities then you can decide how much does it cost to do specific activities and you can budget so that you can do all of the activities that you want to do and if there's extra money left over in your budget then you can add on different activities throughout your trip but don't be overwhelmed by wanting to have so much money to travel because it's not necessary. You don't need it. If you're not sure about the exchange rate from the, if you're traveling international and you're not sure about the exchange rate, then you can use a website called xe.com and you can type in whatever currency you have into the search box. A, along with the currency of the country that you're planning to travel to and it will give you the exact exchange rate. Keep in mind that is for the day the exchange rate does fluctuate so you just want to keep in mind that it will be around that exchange rate by the time you travel. So when you want to exchange money then you can do that right at the airport. I highly recommend doing it once you get to the country I don't necessarily recommend exchanging money at your bank. And there are plenty of ATMs and exchange places in destinations for you to easily exchange currency. Step number six is just to relax. Enjoy your vacation, keep an open mind, and don't be so strict on having a schedule. I talked about planning activities in step number three. And the biggest takeaway that I wanted you to get from that step is that you are just aware of what is actually going on in the destination. It's not to say that you have to plan everything in advance. There are some things that you do want to plan in advance. If there's a very popular restaurant, you want to plan your, your day there or your night for dinner there in advance just in case it gets booked. Or if there's a specific activity that has to be planned in advance, then I recommend doing that. But don't plan your entire vacation. It's a vacation for a reason. And most of the time, people spend so much time go, 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 go on their vacation that they're burned out by the time they get home. And the reason why I say keep an open mind is because you may go to a place that's completely different than where you're from. And so don't expect things to be exactly how they are at home. That's the reason why you travel, is so that you have a different experience. So I've grown up hearing never talk to strangers. And one of the things about travel that has opened me up is that it's okay to talk to locals. Not saying that you talk to everyone that you come encounter with. But have a conversation with the store owner. If you're in a shop and you're deciding if you want to buy something, have a conversation with the store owner. You never know what that conversation can turn into. Maybe they have something in the back similar to what you're looking at and they pull it out to show you just because you actually took the time to have a conversation with them. 
there's so much value in having conversations with locals that you won't get if you don't talk. So keep that in mind. Have conversations with locals. Be friendly and enjoy the experience. Out of the six steps that I mentioned in this video, which steps did you find the most helpful? Was it step number one, all about flights? Was it step number two, giving you information on how to book your hotel? Was it step number three on planning activities? Was it step number four on internet and Wi-Fi and your cell phone connection? Was it step number five, all about money? Or was it step number six? just to relax and enjoy your vacation. Which step was most helpful for you? When you're traveling, always be open-minded and always be willing to ask questions because asking questions is going to get you a lot further than not asking questions. So if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and like this video and comment below and let me know if you found this information helpful and if I drop some gems in the video. Until next time, bye!